Hey guys, welcome back. You know what the temperature's dropping in winter just around the corner? It's that time of year where people start to think more about their heating bill. I caught up with Ross Trithui from This Old House to talk about ways to save money while heating your home. Now it's time for Open House, sponsored by Pyramid Heating and Cooling. When it comes to heating and cooling and everything with building science, there is one person I lean on the most, and that is Ross Trithui. Might have seen him on a little show called This Old House or Ask This Old House. We've got him here today. Thanks for joining us again on Around the House Northwest, my friend. Hey, thanks for having me, Eric. Excited to be here again. Ah, always good to see you. And you know, this space, when it comes to heating and cooling, it is a moving ball, it seems. I, I'll, I'll learn something new about something that happens, and now, months later, there's new stuff. It just seems to be there is so much technology coming out that uh, mm. it's hard to stay on top of it. I mean, I'm in this industry day in and day out. <laughs> yeah, it's always changing, you know, to that point. So even, you know, when the quote unquote experts are having, you know, difficulty keeping on top of it, but there's a lot of moving places here. You know, we've got heat pumps that are really, really taking off uh, in, in the United States, of course. But yeah. the, the cool thing about it is a lot of technology is coming from either Asia or Europe. So it's already been thought through, it's been vetted, it works. And then they bring it over to this to the states, and then we get to basically Americanize it and kind of apply it into the houses uh, and systems that we kind of integrate with. Nice, yeah, they're really heavy on energy standards over there, and and we're kind of getting there. But it seems like yep. there's a lot of technology that uh, we just haven't, you know, brought across the pond. Yeah, I mean, the part of it is the um, you know when people ask me why is kind of the USA maybe a little bit behind the eight ball on this stuff, and part of that is because of the energy costs. You know, for a long period of time. The states have really, you know, we've been flush with energy and low cost energy, right? So our cost of electricity, you know, nationwide is, I think, around 16 cents a kilowatt hour. Some places are still in the like nine and 10 cents range. Some places in the 30, 35 cent range. But Europe, you know, on average has been spending around 30 to 35 cents a kilowatt hour for a long time. So when you double or sometimes triple the cost of electricity, you know, if we went to the pumps and paid $9 or $10 for a gallon, you know, which is what they pay, like yeah. people would be up in arms, like that would be crazy. And so, you know, when you pay a really high cost for fossil fuel energy or for electric energy, all of a sudden now it opens up the avenue for new technologies and for the, you know, the rebirth of heat pumps. And so we're starting to see that as energy prices are rising across the country. And so heat pumps is just, you know, a nice th way of saying, hey, let's put a magic box typically outside that heats it and cools it and gives us some domestic hot water potentially. And yep. let's let that have, you know, vapor injection, let it have an inverter compressor, let it have, uh, you know, basically a really good refrigerant in there, um, hopefully self-contained. You know, these you know, types of systems are now here um, and they continue to get better and better. So we're typically working with 410A refrigerant. That's been the, the typical refrigerant of choice. Um, R22, which is the old Freon systems, that's been phased out. Uh, but 410A is already being talked about on the chopping block. Yeah. to be phased out and then you know so it's opening up a whole new avenue for new refrigerants that are more efficient and more environmentally friendly I so see. r32s um r290s r744s you know so these are all new refrigerants that are coming and they all have their pros they all have their cons there's no magic box or no magic solution <laughs> here but yeah. um but they are um but it's great it's great to see. Yeah, and so that's going to really translate into lower heating costs and cooling costs for people uh, when they start buying into these systems because as we get more efficient, that just saves more money. Uh, as long as we've got some rebates out there that help along the way, I think it starts to become pretty cost effective. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so when you look at it, the cost of, let's say, propane, oil, or natural gas, if that's available to you, and you compare that to the cost of electricity with heat pumps, that the difference there is what I'm always interested in, because in some cases, you know, in most cases, um, you know, heating with heat pumps with a COP of three or three and a half or even geothermal heat pumps at a four or five, you know, that's 300 or 400 percent efficient. There's no boiler out there that can get over 100 percent efficient. Right. The most we can get is maybe 95, 96 percent. So, you know, we are you know, we have a two, three, four X efficiency gain by going to heat pumps. So as long as our electric rates on a level playing field are less than, you know, uh, are going to be on a level playing field with, with gas, propane, or oil, then heat pumps will always win in that discussion. Yeah. So it's only when we have really, really cheap cost of natural gas, for example, is the only time where you might see uh, gas still be a more cost-effective option for heating buildings. But that's usually not the case. 
Yeah, that makes sense. And then we've got all those rebates that are out there coming out uh, across the country here in 2024, it seems. Uh, I know they were talking about it hitting 2023, but I think the states are running those out individually. But uh, mm -hmm. for some people, that could be a huge savings on heat pumps. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So most states have a heat pump incentive. A lot of the utility companies have heat pump incentives. Um, and in uh, the federal, you know, there's federal tax credits now for certain types of heat pumps. So it's um, there's definitely money to be had um, at all different levels, local, you know, state and federal level. Um, and, in, uh, you know, those basically get us over the hump, you know, where it might be a little bit more expensive to put a heat pump in. You know, it's a glorified air conditioner that has a reversing valve. So it's not really that much crazy, you know, in terms of you know, infrastructure and cost. But if you can get that with a rebate from the local state and federal level, now it gets you into this new heat pump system that's going to be designed for the next 15, 20, 25 years. So that house is going to be able to reap the benefits for the next 20, 25, 30 years, you know, of its installation, you know, and beyond. Man, that's great, great advice. Yeah. Ross, thanks for coming on today, brother. I appreciate it. We're out of time, but uh, it's right. always great to see you.